Welcome back to the XR conference. We heard earlier this afternoon that another digital revolution lies ahead with spatial computing and the AR cloud. And in this session, we want to dive deeper into this topic. In his talk, René Schulte, who is the director of global innovation at Valorum Reply, will cover the current state of technology and will tell us why spatial computing with VR, AR, mixed reality will be key for the industry of the future. And it will dramatically change how humans interact with computers. And I know that he has prepared a great talk and he needs all the time that he can get. So I'm heading, I'm, I'm giving right over to René, the stage is yours. We're looking forward to your talk. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the talk, Spatial Computing and DAO Cloud. And like you have heard, we will talk about, well, of course, spatial computing and I explain what this technology is all about. I will show you some use cases like digital twin, also how we can combine AI with mixed reality for intelligent edge scenarios. Uh, we will talk about 3D scanning on mobile and what you can do with these kind of devices already, which is just a normal mobile device. Um, and even we can stream 3D data from it, which is pretty exciting. I will show you how you can render huge 3D models on a mobile device like a HoloLens. And we will talk about object anchors. We will talk about um, spatial anchors, the AR cloud, all of that stuff, plenty of things. Um, my name is Rene. I'm Director of Global Innovation at Valorum Reply. We are a digital transformation company, pretty much focused on the Microsoft stack, but ranging from the back end to the front end. So that includes Azure cloud computing, but also things like HoloLens development, of course. I'm also a Microsoft Regional Director and MVP, which are community awards that Microsoft uh, provides to independent experts that share their knowledge. So I do a lot of conference talks, open source projects, and very active on social media. So feel free to connect on LinkedIn and Twitter and so on, where I keep on sharing all the stuff you will see today constantly. I'm also an advisor for the Beyond AR Association, as well as the XR Bootcamp. Alrighty, folks. Let's talk about spatial computing and what that actually is. But first of all, let's go back to a little bit back in time and talk about personal computing just for a minute. And so as you might know, you know, really in the 90s, personal computing became a thing when many people got a computer at their home. And later on, once they become internet connected, that really dramatically changed how people interacted with each other. And it really democratized knowledge sharing especially with Web 2.0, right, where everyone can create content, basically, and share it with a lot of people all around them. And so after personal computing, uh, we had per mobile computing. And mobile computing is the dominant computing platform at the moment, right? And like smartphones, especially like, you know, initially BlackBerry, then the iPhone, once they came out with multi-touch, that really changed how people interacted with devices, right? And so after the personal and now mobile computing age, we're now entering the so-called spatial computing age, right? And spatial computing includes devices, what you can see here on the video or what I have here, like a HoloLens, right? Which has these transparent displays where you can still see the world around you, uh, but also virtual objects augmented right inside of your view, right? And then it has all these sensors you can see on top here, right? And all of these sensors, they can sense the world around you. They can understand where there is a surface, right? Where there is a wall or floor or, or you know, ceiling, whatever. And all of these data can be used for providing spatially aware and contextually aware information, right? But it doesn't just have to be like an, a super advanced device like a HoloLens or a Magic Leap. It can also be even your mobile phone, right? Like even your mobile phone these days with all the camera modules they have on them, they can provide advanced computing capabilities also thanks to computer vision and AI that can sense the world around you, right? So spatial computing really means devices like this, but also this. The general thing is just devices that can sense the world around you, that can understand the world and provide contextual information, right? And then on top of that, we have the AR cloud, this augmented reality cloud, which is this kind of digital twin of our whole physical world, right? And so, like I mentioned, we have these devices, right? All of them. And they can sense the world around us with these spatial computing devices. You can get an understanding of the world. And so you can create 3D reconstructions of a real world environment. Like you can see here in this office, right? You can get a 3D scan, a 3D reconstruction of it with these devices. But it just lives on each single device, right? It just on one device is this kind of 3D reconstruction on that device, another 3D reconstruction. And the power of the Augmented reality cloud is like bringing this all together to have this kind of digital content layer from all of these devices from the whole world, right? And then we can do things like what you can see here in the video. We can position, we can pin 
or anchor virtual content in the real world, right? So for example, someone can leave this like virtual character there in the real world with device A, and then this kid comes with device B and can relocalize. And since we have this reference, this machine readable map of the real world with the AR cloud, this can be understood and this can be used. And we're going to talk about much more about the AR cloud at the end of the session. I will show you lots of use cases, uh, but definitely one of the most exciting technologies, spatial computing plus the AR cloud, this digital reference map will provide us uh, immense uh, use cases we couldn't imagine before. Well, let's talk about some use cases um, and I've handed it already. Um, let's talk about digital twins. And so if you don't know what a digital twin is, it's basically a digital replica of a real world entity enhanced with real time IoT sensor data, right? And so what you can see here in this example with this whole lens application we have built is you can see a chemical plant, a digital twin. And here you can see these sensor boxes, right? What a lady is, is clicking on right now. And they provide you real time sensor data from the real chemical plant, right? Like pressure, humidity. So all of the data is being aggregated in a real factory in a real chemical plant. And we can visualize that on top of that 3D model. And since using the HoloLens, again, you have these stereo displays, you can see stereo 3D in real time with it, right? And so we can visualize the real time IoT sensor data on top of that uh, 3D model. And that provides us this digital twin and that gives us insights much more faster. We can get contextual information much more faster instead of having to scroll through a dashboard, you know, and trying to find that information there. So there's quite a bit of business value and it's definitely a huge and growing market there, right? All right, another use case I'm going to show you is how you can combine AI for object recognition running directly on the HoloLens. So I did, what I did here is I trained a neural network, an object recognition model, an AI model um, to recognize certain objects, right? And once I trained it, I deployed it directly on the HoloLens. So it's running directly on the HoloLens. So what you're about to see is running near real time on the HoloLens for object recognition. This might be a car wheel 3.5 meter in front of you. So as you can hear, it outputs what you can see and how far it is away from you, right? This might be a matchstick 1.1 meter in front of you. And so for this, I'm using, um, again, a custom AI model I trained in the cloud and then deployed directly on the HoloLens, right? So it's running here on the, on the lens directly. It doesn't have to stream the camera frames into the cloud. It can process that all locally on the device. And of course, that is giving us a lot of opportunities for low latency scenarios. Also think about you don't have to send any images into the cloud, right? Also for privacy reasons. And so you might know, why would I need that? I know what a power drill is. I know what a hammer is. Well, of course you know, but think about this could be specialized tools, right? You need to train a new employee on, or think about you go to your favorite, um, you know, I don't know, Ikea or whatever, you buy a new furniture and you need to assemble it, right? And you can even bring in your favorite beer brand. This might be a Raid Burger beer bottle. One All right. <laughs> uh, just a quick joke for my Bavarian friends in Munich, right? Um, Got to bring in uh, like the local beer here in Dresden. Anyway, but but you get the idea, right? I can run near real-time object recognition directly on the HoloLens. No cloud connectivity needed. All the recognition done on the device. And running this on the HoloLens 2 gives you uh, 40 milliseconds for each recognition run. So we're really talking about uh, real-time here. All right, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about how you can render these huge 3D models on a HoloLens, in fact. Um, so you have to know the HoloLens is fully self-contained. So it does all the computing on the device here, right? It doesn't need a cable. It doesn't need a, a PC or something. It's fully mobile, fully untethered, self-contained. And so that means, of course, it's limited in terms of what kind of 3D models it can render, right? And typically, you can render a 3D model with 100 to 200,000 polygons, right? That's the level of detail you can get on it. What you can see here in the video, this is recorded straight on the whole lens, and it's rendering a 19 million polygon model, right? So you might wonder, how can I render a 19 million polygon model on a device that is capable of rendering 100 to 200,000 polygons? Well, this is using remote rendering. And so what it's, what it's doing here, it's basically, it's taking the input data from the whole lens, like the head rotation, the head movement, right? And also the hand recognition data. All of that data is being sent into the cloud in one of these powerful Azure GPU virtual machines 
where this remote rendering engine is running. And this remote rendering engine is rendering this complex free model, which you can see here remotely based on the input it got from the local device, right? And then it's streaming back the rendered frames for the left and the right eye as stereo 3D video back to the HoloLens and then it's projecting it into the correct view without any delay. Like you don't notice any latency and delay. And I can tell you when I tried this out the first time I was very skeptical because you always have latency, right? If you send it from, from your client to a cloud computer and then you need to send it back. But they do some clever tricks like late state reprojection, this kind of warping and um, works really great. And you can render these huge 3D models. And if you look at the video, you can also see the bandwidth. It's less than 20 megabit per second that you need to downstream, right? Because it's sending back these videos. But it's amazing because we can take these 3D models as they are, right? And bring them on to the whole lens. And that is always a challenge if we're dealing with uh, CAT models, with computer-aided design models we typically get from our clients, right? They are huge. They are way too big typically, and we have to, uh, ask a 3D artist, for example, to take these complex 3D models and reduce them to do manual model reduction. Um, but that is expensive, of course, right? And so now we can take these 3D models as they are and bring them on the whole lens and just stream them, basically. And that is providing a lot of business value. Also think about the future, right? Um, I mean, the whole lens is not that huge. You can wear it for a few hours. But still, what we want in a few years is maybe glasses like this kind of size, right? And think about if I can offload some of the heavy lifting, like the complex 3D rendering into the cloud, um, also combined with 5G, uh, low latency network connectivity, we can shrink devices down to this size in the future, right? Of course, that's going to happen. And this will be one of the key technologies to enable that, right? All right, let's mention, uh, I've already mentioned AL Cloud, but let's talk a little bit more about it. The um, market research company, by, by the way, uh, is labeling it as a transformational technology. So Gartner is basically saying in the emerging tech hype cycle, that's one of the highest benefit ratings they're giving with transformation. And they're saying this will change how we interact with the world around us. And well, I fully agree, of course, right? A lot of all the big players are working on that. You have Google, you have uh, Apple, you have a lot of uh, startups that actually some of them were acquired already, like Niantic acquired 60 AI. You have a great company from Berlin, like Visualix as a, a startup and so on. So all of them are working in that space. Um, but I have to say, uh, Microsoft with their offering called Azure Spatial Anchors, they're still the furthest ahead because they allow you to create these kind of reference points, these anchors, wherever you want them. And you can also save them as long as you want. But we will talk a little bit more about it in a moment. Uh, but let's get back to how does it work actually. So if you look at this video, which is from 60AI, by the way, you see these gentlemen walking around with their smartphone in an office setting, right? And it's just a normal smartphone. And with each of these smartphones, they can scan a little part of it. They are all generating a little puzzle piece. And the power of the AR cloud is really what you can see here, like stitching these puzzle pieces from each and every device, bringing them together and having this holistic kind of puzzle or this holistic kind of digital twin of this office in this case, right? And now if we scale this up and take all the devices out there, and if we can merge all of the data together, we get this AR cloud, we get this holistic twin of the whole world around us, right? And so you can uh, build a lot of uh, amazing experiences, in fact, with it. And uh, let me show you some examples. Um, so here's uh, one test I did where I used an Android phone to create a so-called spatial anchor, which is a, a point I can place in the real world, right? In my AR cloud reference copy. And now what you can see here is a first person view of the whole lens, right? And so I, I created this spatial anchor on my Android phone, uploaded it into the Azure Spatial Anchor service. Then it downloaded it on my HoloLens and it shows me the same anchor at the exact same location, right? And we're talking about a 10 centimeter range here, right? So this is not using GPS, this is not using Bluetooth, not using Wi-Fi, anything of that like that, but really computer vision. So it's analyzing the camera frames, right? And with this, we can share between these kind of wholly different devices, right? They can both share the same reference location. And so we can share these anchors across devices and we can share them over time, which you can see in this video where I created such an anchor at the Pike Place market. And then, uh, you know, I went on, basically created that anchor. A few days later, I came back to the same spot and relocalized that anchor. And voila, I found it really fast in a few seconds at the exact same location. 
And again, that is using computer vision, analyzing camera frames. And as you notice, the floor pattern changed, right? Which is a big challenge for these computer vision algorithms. But anyway, so I can share across devices and I can persist these anchors. I can share it over time. And so what can you build with it? Let me show you some use cases. And one of them is with an application we've built um, that is running on Android, iOS, and HoloLens um, for providing Azure Spatial Anchor support, right? For model viewer, if you will. So what you can see here in this video is recorded on an Android phone and a gentleman is scanning a little bit the space to get enough information so that such an anchor can be created this reference location in the, the AO cloud. And you can see the lady on the opposite side when she was scanning around with her iPhone in this case, but they're both standing on opposite sides, but they can still both reference that same location anchor in the middle, right? They both now share both different devices, Android and iOS. They both now share the reference anchor point, right? And now we can, as you can see here, load in 3D content. So now, now seeing the, the same content at the exact same location with the exact position and orientation as it relates to the real world, although they're standing on total opposite side of the rooms, right? And, you know, we can do these kind of design collaboration scenarios. We can visualize content in what to one-to-one -one scale in AR. And the best of it, we can share it with all these different device categories and we can persist it which you can see in this scenario where I load such an anchor that I created in front of my house to uh, bring in uh, 3D content, right? And I'm scanning a little bit with my phone to relocalize the anchor I created before. And here you can see after a few seconds, it quickly found the anchor and loaded the 3D model I attached to it, which as you might be able to see is a wooden Easter bunny sculpture. Um, and it looks like it was fully scanned, right? You can see the original on the right-hand side and well, it's digital twin on the left-hand side, which was um, anchored there, right? And so you might wonder, how did I create that 3D anchor? Uh, how did I create that 3D model? How did I create that 3D scan? Did I use a complex 3D scanning studio, a lot of photos with photogrammetry? No, just this phone. And so this is one of the newer phones that has a depth camera, a time of flight camera, basically just like a lot of modern devices have these days. And I could create this 3D model in like half a minute just by walking around it and whoop, I got a 3D model. And that is ridiculously awesome because I can create content very fast. And again, then if I have this content, I can put it in augmented reality and with technologies like Azure Spatial Anchors, I can put it there, I can anchor this content in the real world. And for example, I could tell my uncle who makes these wooden Easter Bunny sculptures to come to my house, check it out and see the larger one. And maybe he can make me such a larger one for real, right? Um, so a lot of use cases. Here are a few more examples of other 3D scans I created just with this phone. In fact, uh, the 3D scan of myself, uh, my 12 year old daughter made that with this phone. This is kind of ridiculous, the quality we're getting already um, with a mobile 3D scan and it will just get better over the years, right? And that solves this, this bottleneck we always have when we create content, right? We always need to have 3D content. Well, you can quickly create it with these kind of 3D scanning and then use that for proof of concepts and so on, right? Or you can even live stream that. So what you're about to see is a recording. So I was wearing, a in the video you're going to see, I was wearing a HoloLens, right? And in the HoloLens, I was seeing the video stream coming from this device, but not just a 2D video stream, but actually a 3D video stream, right? And so take a look at this, very early um, proof of concept that I created. So you see it a little bit juddering and, and, and lagging and so on. It's not perfect yet, but it shows you the example, right? So my my 12 year old, she's holding that phone in front of our car. And as you can see, I instructed her to close the lid because I was wearing the HoloLens, right? And in the HoloLens, I could see the 3D scene, which is in front of the phone. So I cannot just see a 2D video with it, but this has stereo 3D screens. So I can see stereo 3D with it, right? So I know the depth. I know, you know exactly what's going on. Here you can see the phone I'm using. Again, just streaming 3D data live from a phone. Like that is pretty amazing. And now we have full resolution as well. So here's another uh, quick demo I made just a few days ago. Um, again, using this phone, right? So it's taking the, the color data plus the depth data. So both, right? So the distance plus the color mapped on top of that and streaming it from this phone into the HoloLens. So this video is recorded on the HoloLens, right? And of course, with the HoloLens, I can see 3D because you have a left and right eye stereo 3D. 
Um, but in the video you're now seeing in this presentation, you cannot see 3D, of course, because you're just seeing a 2D video projection in the end, right? But if you notice when I pause the streaming, when I pause the live streaming from the mobile device and I rotate my head a little bit to the left and right, you can see it's in fact 3D, right? And so that helps me a lot for, you know, think about remote assistance scenario. So instead of just seeing 2D video, you can see 3D video, right? And here you can see when I rotate my head in the whole lens that the scenery is in fact a live 3D stream, right? So exciting stuff. I'm still quite early in development process. I need a little bit more time on that. Um, but let me know if you're interested in it. Maybe we can collaborate on something like that. All right, let's talk about 3D object tracking. And there's a technology called Azure Object Anchors, which allows me to take a 3D model of a real world object. Like in this case, we have a 3D model of that car and that will become my marker. So you don't have to use like a QR code or an image target or any other AR marker. You can use a real world object. So in the end, we can actually use that real world car as our marker because we have a 3D model of it. And then we can lock content on top of it. Okay, now come honk. You can even integrate some car APIs to let it honk. But anyway, the core here about Azure Object Anchors is you take a 3D model that becomes your AR marker and then you can use a real world object being recognized and mapping the content on top of it, right? Okay, um, we're going a, a bit faster here because we still have uh, a few more minutes and I wanna show you some more stuff. I have been talking about the whole world becomes a canvas, right? And that's literally the case when we think about, uh, we can put 3D content on top of the real world, right? And we can bring in Clippy, for example, and we can have Clippy in 3D now, right? Because I can put Clippy as an AR overlay in the real world. And the nice part about it is, if we think about um, all these social media apps like Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of them have these AR filters, right? Like here's my little bitmoji Renee, and I can put it in AR, right? That's possible with Snapchat. I can have this little, you know, 3D figure, a dance, and do AR content. Right now, I can just take a photo or share a video. But actually, Snapchat is working on that we can use the AR cloud to position that content in the real world, right? Now, think about if you could tell your friends, hey, I left that little mini me somewhere in the city and you know, go there and check it out instead of just you know, sharing a video or photo. Well, that is what Snapchat is currently working on, right? As you can see here, um, this is one of their first beta versions of their own AR cloud solution called Local Lenses. And they're launching it as a beta at London's Carnaby Street. Well, and they're exactly doing what I've been talking about since like two years or so. Like, you know, the whole world becomes a canvas. You can share augmented reality content across devices and over time. And that is exciting. Speaking about time, let me show you another recent uh, experiment I'm working on which is about time machine portals. So let me play the video and explain it to you. What you're about to see is an old video clip from 1946. And so I live in Dresden in, in Germany, right? And so we have some old video clips of, well, old sceneries, right? And so what I did here is I positioned that in the real world at the current location, as you can see here with the tram tracks, right? And so that's exactly at the current real world location. And I can take that old video clip and put it there at the exact location. And so I get this kind of portal back into the old days, right? I can look how the scenery was looking uh, back then. And thanks to the AR cloud, and again, I'm using Azure Spatial Anchors here, I can put an anchor there at the real world location and the content will stay there as you know, if it would just be in place there, right? And so I can build these kind of touristic attractions. I can take some old footage and provide these kind of time machine portals back into the old time, right? And I can even enhance it with uh, thanks to AI. And so I work with Eddie Hu, who helped me to enhance some of that old footage, right? So this is the exact video clip you saw before from 1946, but now with 4K resolution, 60 frames per second, frame interpolated from 15 frames per second, and of course, colorized, right? And that is just remarkable. Um, yeah, and you know, we can build these kind of immersive experience. And I can tell you when you're standing there and just using a phone, right? Because it works, of course, cross-platform with HoloLens, with phone and so on. If you just use the phone, it really feels like you're there and looking back into the time. It is ridiculous how good that now works, right? All righty. Um, so 
let's get back to the end of the presentation. We had a lot of stuff to cover, but looking at the time, I think we should get to an end here. There's a lot of things we can build, right? We can build even wayfinding in, uh, experiences, right? Which I haven't talked about a lot, but think about these anchor points you can put in the real world. If you connect them with each other, you can build wayfinding instructions, right? So I could, like, if you look, go back to the previous example with these kind of historic time machine portals, I can put them in the real world, like in my city or Munich, right? Of course, very historic city. So you can also take a lot of that old footage, video clips, photos, put them in the city and can even have your kind of wayfinding AR walking route in the city and things like that. And that's things we can build thanks to spatial computing devices, uh, which can sense the world around us, plus the AR cloud, this kind of digital reference map um, that is very precise that we can use together, right? So I think it's an amazing time to be alive where we're really seeing science fiction technology becoming a reality. And we are part of that, right? And it's super exciting, actually. The 2020s won't just be about COVID and all that crap, but it will also be about the revolution that spatial computing and the AI cloud is going to allow us to interact with each other thanks to digital content. All right, people, uh, thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference here. Feel free to co connect with me on LinkedIn. You see my name, my Twitter handle, uh, where I keep on sharing all that stuff out all the time. Again, thanks for your attention and take care. Bye bye. Uh, thank you, Rene, for this great talk. And, you know, the impressive videos that, show, that has shown, have shown us what is already possible with spatial computing, that was really fascinating. Um, you folks out there, stay tuned for a couple of minutes. Then we go on with Robert Scoble, and we're going to talk more about spatial computing, but also about some great stories from the Silicon Valley. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then.